My guest today is a former member of the band The Misfits and has participated in many projects over the years. Please welcome the abominable Dr. Chad. Hey, man, how are you? <laughs> Good. I am abominable. <laughs> All right. Hey, just to start, uh, let me ask you this one. Who introduced you to the music and why did you decide to play drums? Oh, man. Uh, the earliest thing I can remember was just, I was like in fifth or sixth grade. And like the coolest kid in the class had a <laughs> pair of drumsticks sticking out of his pocket. And he looked so cool. I don't know. And I said, wow. I want, I want to know what that's all about. And I'd start taking drum lessons at, in sixth grade. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, so I thought it would be cool. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, I saw talent first. What is the place, uh, the, the, the horror movie, the horror style, the horror music have uh, in, your, in your life? Uh, yeah, it is life for me. Um, you know, the moment I try to do something else, uh, I feel empty. So, you know, music will always be in my life, which is a good thing. And uh, it should be in everybody's life. I'm curious. Uh, what is your favorite horror movie? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I like Dead Alive. I like the uh, lawnmower scene. I think it's uh, very cool uh, to remember. How did you become a member of the Misfits? How? Um, I knew the guys from growing up in, in high school, and we grew up in the same town. Our fathers grew up together and, and played ball together. Um, I wasn't in any band when the band started in 77. I was into sports at that time. And then um, around 1980, 1980, I started getting into music. And then in like 93, I met up with Jerry at a funeral. And I gave him my number. I said, if you want to jam, you know, I'm around for jamming. And he called me up and said, hey, uh, come up and uh, roadie for my drummer, who's in Christ the Conqueror. And I said, okay. So I went up and started roadie in for him. And then the drummer started not to show up. And I filled in. And next thing you know, it, Christ the Conqueror became the Misfits. And that's how that happened. That's pretty good. Pretty short. How do you like that? What is your proudest moment during your time with the Misfits? Oh, man, there were so many. I don't know, so many. I think you've done uh, two very good uh, albums with uh, Fanless Monster and uh, American Psycho. So uh, I've na and now in 2019, the album Fanless Monster will celebrate its 20th anniversary. Uh, is there any chance you guys will do something for the fans of this era for the occasion? I know Michael Graves uh, want to do uh, some concert about uh, this album, and uh, you have a, a little problem with Jerry with that, but do you think it's possible just for the fans? Um, yeah, that would be up to Jerry. And, uh, yeah, I'm in. Uh Yeah, I guess if he if he gets tired of sitting at home waiting for the other band to play, maybe he will get together with us and uh oh, maybe we'll do another record. Who knows, you know? We're all uh still in our prime kinda, so we got another couple of records in us. Yeah, that would be up to Jerry. I think everybody would do it. So Uh, I never say never. So, uh, at your point of view, it's uh, the decision of Jerry only? <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> want to do, to do uh, the, the, the joke, <laughs> but... Uh... <laughs> yes, Jerry only. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, uh, and whatever deal he has with Glenn, I don't know if he's allowed to do it or not. So, what is your relation maybe he's not now? Allowed to do it. What is your relation now with Michael Graves and uh, Jerry and uh, and Doyle? Do you have a a good relation uh, with us? Yeah, I have a great relationship uh, with Jerry and Doyle. Um, I haven't spoken to Mike since he left uh, Graves back in 2002. So. But um, yeah, I have, I have a great relationship with everybody. With, with the Misfits, you have a short time. You've been a wrestler with the uh, Vampiro in the WCW. Did you like that experience? How was it? That was great. Um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I wish we kept doing it for a little longer. We only did it for like two months, but it it, se it seems so long. But uh. I wish we did it for a couple more months. That was a lot of fun. I did get hurt. I still have lumps. But uh, it was worth it. <laughs> Last question about the Misfits. And after uh, we talk about your other projects. Um, with the Misfits, which one is your favorite song? Okay. Um, on American Psycho, I would say Don't Open Till Doomsday. I love playing that one. And on Famous Monsters, I, I love playing Saturday Night. And on Cuts from the Crypt, I love Fiend Without a Face. That song's great. Yeah, those are my three favorite from each album. You're not only a drummer, you can also sing pretty well. Uh, so uh, you have your whole band, Dr. Trud X Ward. How was it uh, to start this personal project after The Misfits? X Ward started in 2003, and uh, it's still going today. A couple guys retired from playing live, but they'll still be on the record. And uh, I got two new live guys, two new guys, that, and uh, we got two shows coming up. I think uh, it's a. Uh it's so sad because uh, I think your project is underrated. It's very good. Uh, I have to think to the song Goodbye. I have to think uh, to uh, many songs uh, you have right. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty nice to hear. It's uh, like the Misfits, it's like Blitzkid. It's like Graves. Uh, you, I think you can uh, heard a, a couple of your project in this project. Do you think this project is uh, very underrated? Because at my point of view, uh, you have to... Oh, you, you will have more success than of you have. Of course, it's underrated. I have, I have the greatest band on the planet. Nobody can touch my guys. It's a great band. But uh, you know, as long as I have fun and the band has fun, that's all that matters. I'm not in it for the money. I'm not in it, in it for the fame. Uh, we're in it for the long haul. Keep it small. Keep it going. Um. That's it. We have fun playing together. Uh, and we're going to come out with a new record and it'll blow everybody away. And maybe we'll get some recognition the second time around. When do you put the, this next record uh, uh, on, on sale? Who knows? <laughs> Hopefully before the end of the year. Okay. Uh, I, I want to talk about the, the song Goodbye. You, you say before that uh, Uh, without the, the, the horror music, without the horror, you feel empty. Uh, do you think uh, you put uh, all your uh, all your mind in the song Goodbye, or it's just a, a, another story? Um, yeah, that one has legs. Uh, um, that was some good songwriting. Uh, And and it was in the you know I was in the moment. My 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 father just passed away, and people mourn in different ways. And that's how I mourn. I usually go to the piano or the guitar, and just uh, jam for a while and think about you know memories and stuff. That was a good. That was a special song. Do you think of your father when when you sing this song? <laughs> every time uh, yeah yeah <laughs> I think of uh, uh, anybody who passed away 
recently, actually. Next subject. Uh, I heard you are very proud, with reason, of the soundtrack you made for the documentary film uh, 30 Years of Garbage. What can you tell us about it? Oh, it's a great uh, documentary about the Garbage Pail Kids. It's the story about them that, that these artists, the original artists did. And, uh, you know, the cards took place in 1980s. And uh, while I was making the documentary, I used all the instruments from the 80s. Um, it, was, uh, it was fun to do, and uh, I want to do a couple more. Uh, I love doing uh, uh, film scores. A lot of fun. I just sit home all day and, and, and write for 10 hours. It's great. Nothing beats it. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? It's a, uh, it's great. It has all the original artists that did the original drawings to the recent ones now. Um, I got to meet all of them. Uh, I had such a great time working on the film. Uh, everybody was professional. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to do another one. Pretty nice. In fact, in fact, I am doing another one. I just did a film, uh, a song for a film called Shakespeare's Shitstorm. Okay. It's a trauma. It's a trauma movie. It's Lloyd Kaufman's next movie, Shakespeare's Shitstorm. I did a song called uh, "Give Me Some of That Drug." Okay. And uh. It should be out in like two months. About for our musician meeting fans, it's part of the pleasure of the work. And uh, for most uh, for most of it, uh, it could be very cool. I know you give uh, to your fans by participating, for example, in convention, Comic Con, and such events. Uh, what do fans want to know when they meet you? And what is the weirdest thing we're asked to sing? Uh, I love meet and greets. Uh... I do a lot of conventions. It's fun meeting the locals and meeting the fans. Um, I've signed everything. Skulls, boobs. <laughs> That'd be answer I want. <laughs> um, um, I love meet and greets. I don't like meet and greets after concerts. I don't do that. Um, I feel weird doing it after a show. I like to keep the magic and, and, uh, you know, you're walking out of the club a, uh, an hour later and the fan's been waiting there for an hour. He gets an autograph. That's, you know, magic. So I want to keep that intact. You know, after a show, I don't want to hit the shower or, or, or go to bed. I want to party. I'm the first one up, the last one to go to sleep. So uh, you don't uh, you, you don't agree uh, with Doyle what he said before with the meet and greet? I don't know exactly what he said, but I, I, I'm just telling you my what I do, what I would do. Um, I know I wouldn't have meet and greets after shows because it's just too weird for me, and uh, it takes the magic out of meeting you know your idols. And uh, I like meeting people at conventions that's what they're for so um you know i understand he he doesn't like meeting people either and they don't do it i guess you know yep. uh, the same thing with the spotify thing if you don't like spotify or how much they pay you don't do it there's a lot of artists that don't put their music on spotify don't put it on spotify i came up with a solution And I think everybody should listen to me. I think you treat Spotify the way they treat you. If they give you, if they don't want to pay your full royalty for your song, then don't give them the full song. That's what I do. When you, I look at them as a, as a, as an advertisement site. You know, I give them my song, but three, three, three quarters away into my song. I start speaking, telling you, hey, uh, if you want the high quality version of this song, go to iTunes or my website and download it. Thank you. And the music keeps going. That's all you get if you're not going to pay me my money. 
So everybody wins that way. I get paid for my little advertisement. Spotify, Spotify makes money. And the fans get to still hear new music, but they don't get the whole song because they're not paying for the whole song. What do you think about that? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. I know Dr. Chad X. Ward is planning some show in 2019. Any possibility we will have the chance to see you play in Canada, in particularly in Quebec City? I want you, um, yeah, I just want to rock down the right band members. And once I do that, which I think I did already, I think uh, two weeks ago I had auditions. And uh, I think we got a good band. And uh, I think I'm going to start booking some more shows and put a new record out. And uh, and rock the free world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you are. Um, so uh, we we can talk about a new album for you, a new tour, and probably uh, a tour in Canada. Yes, I got two shows coming up though. Saturday, May 18th, in Wilmington, Delaware, at Bar 13th, at Bar 13, and I got one Friday, June 28th, at Bar 13. We're going to be hosting the Spook Show Gulesque and Horror Punk Ogogo. So those two shows, Hellaware Horror Fest and Spook Show Gulesque and Horror Punk Ogogo. Two shows, X-Ward, Saturday, May 18th, Friday, June 28th. All the fans will see this show. I think we, we will have an amazing night with you. Yes. But, uh, yes. Dr. Chad, thanks for your time. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. And uh, just have a, a great tour we're coming and a great album we're coming. Thank you, Gabriel. All right. Thank you. Rock and roll. <laughs>